just lift our hands to the Almighty God and begin to bless His holy name. Give Him glory, give Him honor, give Him adoration. Wherever you are listening to us all over the world, begin to bless His holy name now. Praise the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Ancient of days, the unchangeable changer. Magnify the name of the one who is I am. The same yesterday, the same today, and the same tomorrow. The ancient of days, the rock of ages. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lamb of God, the Great Physician, the God of all flesh, the only one who can reverse the irreversible, the one who speaks and it is done. The one who commands and he stands firm. Give him glory, give him honor. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Almighty, we worship you. The Lord of glory, we worship you. The I am that I am, we worship you. The one who never lost a battle, we worship you. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, Father, do what you alone can do. Heal everybody here tonight in Jesus' name. And wherever your children are listening to this service, Lord, let your healing power be manifest. Every form of sickness, every form of disease, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every siege on the bodies of your children, Lord God Almighty, remove it now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Uh, let someone shout hallelujah. Well, wherever you are, if you have any neighbor there, wave to your neighbors and say, the siege is over. And then give the Lord one more shout of hallelujah. Uh, please be seated as if you are, you are standing. I have good news. When I woke up this morning, the first thing I heard from my daddy is that he was pleased with your worship of yesterday night. So wherever you are, I think you should stand up and shout a big, big, big hallelujah to him. That's very, very good news. That means something is about to happen. Something very, very glorious is about to happen. Tonight, we want to discuss uh, as briefly as we can on the siege against your body is over. I will do a little bit of teaching to prepare the ground. But actually, we are going to pray. You know, when I was a younger Christian, there's something we call push. P U S H. And it was uh, uh, a shortened form of pray until something happens. We call it push. So tell your neighbor you are going to push tonight. I need to ask you to please 
please, please have faith in God tonight. Because one of the greatest days in your life is today. Your faith must be the faith of a child tonight. What kind of faith? Mm. You see, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, Matthew 18, verse 3, the word of God says, unless you are converted and become like a child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. God made it clear the kingdom of God belongs to children. You are going to need the faith of a child tonight. That's a kind of faith that can believe God for anything. I'll give you an example. When I was praying in 1981, a motion, those of us who are in Nigeria, we know motion. Living in a room, a motion. And I was asking God to build me a boy's quarter. Because I've just become general overseer. And my wife and children that I left behind in the lorry, they were about to come and join me. I was living in a mansion in the lorry. In those days, there were more houses then you could imagine that were uh, just empty. From a mansion to a room in Moshin, and then my children, my wife and children, were coming over to join me. So I prayed for a boy's quarter. Small something, one room for me and my wife. Maybe one room for the children and probably one room for guests. And God spoke and said, Son, don't ask me for a house. I've decided to build you a city. Now, you, the only fellow who can believe that statement is either a fool or a child. I was a child. I not only believed God, I told those who were close to me. I want you to have that kind of faith. As I tell you, the siege over your body is over tonight. I need to explain this because oh God is about to do something in the life of some. I told you before, I went to Elisha and I saw some children playing and one of them came to me and said, I want a pair of shoes for Christmas. I said, okay, you will have it. So he ran to the other children who were playing and said, I have brand new shoes for Christmas. 
The other children looked at him. They saw the excitement. They said, who told you? He said, Baba Eko, that's Papa who came from Lagos. They all say, Eee. And then one of them said, I to have a pair of shoes for Christmas. When they asked him, Who told you? He said, My father. And they all said, Her. That's joking shoes. In other words, the one who makes a promise matters. I am standing here tonight as a representative of the Most High God when I say the siege against your body is over. If anybody asks you who said so, don't say Pastor Adibri. It's merely re relating to you what his daddy said. Forgive me, but I, I need to lay this foundation. I need to make sure this foundation is solid before we proceed further. You have had the testimony of one of my daughters came to the Holy Ghost service. And the word came. There's someone here going for a visa interview next week. The visa is given. She was glad because she was going for visa interview, American visa interview. The following week, she went. She got there, the woman interviewer said, no visa. Ah, she said, ah, uh -uh. my father said, visa granted. <laughs> the woman looked at her and said, who is your father? And he said, Pastor, the woman laughed. I thought you were going to say your father is the president or a senator or a governor, pastor. The woman laughed. Get away from here, she said. The girl packed her papers and said, ah, but my daddy said, well, reluctantly, she turned to go. And all of a sudden, the visa officer said, Come, because you made me laugh, I give you two years' visa. They don't give you visa for making them laugh. The visa was given because God said so. In the name that's above every other name, I am telling someone here, listening to me tonight, the siege over your body is over. to excuse me tonight <laughs> you know you need to pray for me um, so that I can remain cool and calm but I'm going to talk to you briefly and, and, and I will talk to you the way I put it down in my notes you know when I'm thinking writing my notes the, I'm still a mathematician. 
So I will, if you hear me say equation one, equation two, just understand. Equation one is that God loves you and made you for his pleasure. I'm sure you know God loves you. John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, 16. God so loved the world. The world. That includes you. And Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11 says, You were created for his pleasure. He created you to please him. That's equation one. Equation two. Satan hates you. I'm sure you know that one. And he doesn't want you to please God at all. In First Peter chapter three, verse sorry, First Peter chapter five, verse eight. First Peter chapter five, verse eight. The Bible calls Satan your adversary, your capital enemy. He does not want you to please God at all. Anything that will please God, he doesn't want it. That's equation two. Equation three. God is willing to help you defeat the devil. That's equation three. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 38. Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. First John chapter 3, verse 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. For this cause, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. God wants to help you. And he's going to help you tonight. That's equation number three. Equation number four. We need to report the devil to God. We're going to report the devil to God. Let's if there's any form of sickness, any form of pain in your body, you're going to report the devil to God and say, Daddy, I know you love me. You made me for your pleasure. I know the devil hates me. And he has been tormenting me so that I won't be able to please you. I've come to report him. And then we will push. We will pray until something happens. Very briefly, God made your hands to clap. Hmm. Thank you. In Psalm 47, Psalm 47 verse 1, it says, Clap your hands, all ye people. (laughs) 
Amen. What is the meaning of clapping? It's a signal to the Almighty God that, God, I will cooperate with you. I will explain. I, I will explain. Just a moment. I've told this story before, a long time ago now. One day, the left hand and the, the, the right hand and the left hand woke up and heard the bird singing. And he said, ah, why can't we also make a sound that will be pleasing? And they have tried each finger on his own and no sound was coming. Then by accident, they discover that, oh, if they put two fingers together, they can produce some kind of sound. And then they, they got an inspiration. Suppose the left hand stands still, and then the right hand begins to tap with one finger, it will produce a sound. By the time two fingers come, the sound will be bigger. Three fingers will produce better sound. Four fingers will produce better sound. And five fingers Thank you. God made your hands to clap because each time you are clapping, you are saying to God, I will cooperate with you. That is why that is why God said in Mark chapter 16 from verse 17 to 18, Mark 16, 17 to 18, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He didn't say you are the one who will do the healing. You are the one who will lay the hands so that the power of God can flow through your hands and bring healings. That's why God said to Moses in Exodus chapter 14, from verse, you can read it from verse 1 to the end, Exodus 14, when the Ch Egyptians were coming after the children of Israel and they were by the Red Sea, they were afraid, they cried out to Moses. Moses cried out to God. God said, hey, Moses, tell the children of Israel to move forward. But you do something. Stretch your hands across the sea. And I will cause the wind to blow. And we'll create a path in the Red Sea and the rest is the story you know. I'm going to wave my hands to everybody here tonight. And the wind of the Holy Spirit is going to blow. And every sickness that has been troubling you up to now is going to be drowned. Can we do that one straight away before we continue? Stand on your feet. Let me first of all hear you shout hallelujah.
Now I can't see you all over the world, but at least you can see me. As I wave my hand, what I want you to do is clap your own hands. I'm going to do this for just one minute, and then we are going to shout one big hallelujah. Are you ready? Oh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. If, if you have the faith of a child and you believe that the siege on your hands are gone, shout hallelujah. You can be seated. This is why when Jesus saw a man in the temple in Mark chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5, Mark 3, 1 to 5, a man whose hand was withered, the man didn't ask for help. Jesus saw a man who could not clap because the devil had withered one hand. He restored the hand immediately. Every siege against your hand is gone tonight. <laughs> now, not only physically, but in every facet of life. Because from now on, in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever you touch will prosper. Your legs were made to dance. In Psalm 150, verse 4, Psalm 150, verse 4, the Bible says, let us praise him in the dance. God made your legs to dance. What does dancing symbolize? Because I see some of us, we're too big to dance which is a pity. Again, I have explained this to some of us in the past. To dance is to say to God, I acknowledge you as my owner. Psalm 100 verse 3. Psalm 100 verse 3. He's the one who made us. We are not the one who made ourselves. He owns us. Psalm 95, verse 6 to 7. Psalm 95, verse 6 to 7. Oh, let's come. Let's bow down and worship and admit that we belong to God. When I was explaining this years ago, I said, I had a dog there, very small, pretty dog. We called him Lady White because he was 100% white. I loved this dog, and this dog loved me. When I travel, 
and I return, particularly when I travel abroad, and I return. And Lady White hears my voice. She will leave whatever she was doing and come and begin to dance. My owner has come. I will be surrounded by dignitaries, governors, uh, uh, Lady White will dance. When you dance, you are telling the Almighty God you are my owner. And God will look down from heaven and say, all right, since you acknowledge me as your owner, let me wait and see who will tamper with you. What you are missing. When we are singing choruses, and you, you see those little children, they don't look at you, they don't care about you. They dance, you know, occasionally they show one or two of them on the screen. I don't want to embarrass anybody. But can I give you one minute to dance? Can you dance to the song that says, I am rejoicing, my name has been written. I am rejoicing that I am born again. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am rejoicing, for I am born. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing. My name has been written. I am rejoicing. For I am born again. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing. My name has been written. I am rejoicing. For I am born again. Amen. No, I, I, I don't blame you. You are not used to it. But you see what happened in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. Acts 3, verse 1 to 8. When there was this crippled man by the beautiful gate of the temple, this fellow who was born lame, I've been watching the people in the temple and be saying, Oh God, how I wish I have legs. I would have shown these people how to dance. And all of a sudden, God heard and moved. The Bible said when she got up, she was jumping, she was leaping, she was praising God. The siege on your legs are gone tonight. Maybe we want to try that song one more time. I am rejoicing, my dear. I am rejoicing. to sing it, we are going to sing it a little differently. I am rejoicing, my yokes have been broken. I am rejoicing that I am born again. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, my yokes have been broken.
are going to sing it one more time. But we are going to sing it slightly differently. Um, well, at least one more time. I'm composing the song as we go along. <laughs> I am rejoicing, my siege is now over. I am rejoicing that I am born again. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing. Please be seated. Do you know? In the name that's above every other name. Every siege against your progress is gone. The siege against your legs just must go. Because you need those legs to go out for Jesus Christ. The Bible says, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of them that bring good news. Oh, in the name of the one who called me, your mouth will be full of testimonies. your mouth for a purpose to sing to testify to shout And that's why the devil tries hard to shut your mouth anytime you are trying to shout. That's why you find that whenever you are praying loudly, people who should mind their own business begin to look at you and say, what's wrong with you? You know what happened in the case of Bartimaeus? Jesus was passing by. This man was shouting for help. The people, the crowd, say, shut up. If he had agreed to shut up, he would have died in darkness. He refused to shut up. Occasionally, occasionally I, ha I have some friends 
who, you know, we are close, so we can discuss anything. And one of them asked me, tell us the secret. How come there seem to be more miracles happening among Pentecostals? I said, because we are noisy. They say, why can't you pray quietly? God is not deaf. I say, I know, but it's not nervous. And heaven is full of noise. If you don't like noise, don't go to heaven. It is written, it is written in the Bible. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the loud voice of triumph. And I said, I know, you know it, I know it, that the winning side is the shouting side. When, when, when your team scores a goal, you forget that you are even the president. You shout. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Uh, some of you know the testimony of this woman. Very wealthy woman. Very, very wealthy. And then she became sick. And the secret is that whatever she ate, she vomited. Because she was rich, she went to the best hospital. They took x-ray, they took MRI, they took everything. Everything inside was normal. Finally, she came to, to Butemeta at the headquarters. All I said was, let somebody shout hallelujah. As she was shouting, a worm came out of her mouth. Hallelujah. Now, if the salmon, if this. Uh, 
Ah, okay. If the salmon takes longer than I plan, it is your fault, too. <laughs> Bet the siege. mighty name of Jesus. The seed inside your body is over now. I can pick the parts of your body one by one and show you that this any siege against any part of your body is because the devil does not want you to please God. Take for example your ear. If the devil is messing with your ear, it's because he knows that Faith comes by and hearing by the word of God. And he knows that without faith, you cannot please God. That's why you would rather listen to news than listen to the sermon, than listen to the word of God. But tonight the seed is... I mention one or two others. God created your brain for his pleasure. Why? So you can remember his goodness. So when the devil is messing with your memory, it is because he does not want you to remember the goodness of God. That is why the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. And wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. So when you discover that your memory is not doing as well as it should do. Report Satan to God. And I'm decreeing, particularly to all the students who are listening to me from now on, the siege against your brain is over. Now, this one may surprise you. Hey, hey, you can be seated, don't worry. We will soon get to prayer. <laughs> oh, thank you, my father. You know, when I was preparing for this lecture, and I got to eyes, God, how does eyes give you pleasure? <laughs> I 
Daddy told me something that I can only tell you because you are my children. God said, every great person likes to show off. I said, I see. And uh, my daddy, what is it that you want to show off? And he turned me to Psalm 19, verse 1. Psalm 19, verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament show forth his handiwork. He gave you eyes so you can see the glory of his creation. I decree tonight every siege against your eyes is over. Okay, so we, I think I've done enough of laying the foundation. The next thing is, we should report Satan to God. Now, when, when, when I was studying the story in Mark chapter 2, from verse 1, to 12. Mark chapter 2 from verse 1 to 12. Uh oh, thank you, Father. <laughs> Daddy says uh, that someone said I didn't mention the womb. Huh. <laughs> The Bible made it abundantly clear. God loves children. And if he ever finds the devil messing with your womb, tonight he will knock him on the head. Psalm 127, verse 3. Psalm 127, verse 3 say, Children are the heritage of the Lord. When the, the people brought children to the Lord Jesus Christ for blessing, and the disciples were saying, Hey, you little ones, get away from here. The Bible said, Jesus rebuked them. In the name of the one who sent me, every force working against your fruitfulness, I rebuke tonight in Jesus. So what happened in Mark chapter 2? From verse 1 to 12. Mark chapter 2 from verse 1 to 12. The Bible spoke about a boy, a young man, paralyzed from neck downwards. Four people brought him to Jesus Christ. You know the story. They came to where Jesus was. There was a crowd at the door. The devil knew they were coming. And when they got there, they said, ah, hey, we're not going home without our victory. And you are not going home without your victory tonight. They climbed to the roof. As a good example of push, they got to the roof. The roof was blocking the way. They broke through the roof. 
Incidentally, do you know they didn't wait to repair the roof? <laughs> and then they lowered the boy before Jesus Christ. Check the story very well. They didn't say a word. They just came to report the, <laughs> the devil to Jesus Christ. Okay, oh, here is somebody. You made him in your image. The hands were supposed to be clapping for you. You can't move the hand. The legs were supposed to be dancing for you. You can't move the, the legs. Hey, look, this is what the devil has done. And the Almighty God intervened. Tonight, you and I are going to report the devil to Jesus Christ. And by the time this night is over, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we'll be singing the song of victory. We're going to pray. And we're going to pray together. You will be praying, I will be praying. At least we'll pray up to a certain stage before I will quietly withdraw because the prayer of tonight is the kind of prayer you don't want anybody to disturb you. You want to pray till you know you are broken through. We're going to pray together because the Bible says if two of us shall agree as touching anything we ask on earth, it shall be done for us. Let me tell you, my beloved, I'm 100% in agreement with you. Today, the siege against your body is over. I'm going to dictate to you some prayer points. They are pretty many. So you're going to write them down at the appropriate time. But why, before we do that, don't let us cheat those who have not even surrendered their life to Jesus Christ. Because there's only one prayer that a sinner can pray and God will answer. That is simply, God save my soul. So if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, if you have been joking with something as important as the salvation of your soul, oh, you better quickly, quickly run forward and surrender your life to Jesus Christ tonight so that he can wash away your sins, he can remove everything that can stand between you and the answer to your prayers. So, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, wherever you are, I am going to count from one to seven. By the time I get to seven, if you are not already standing before the altar, wherever you are, well, I know you don't want to come. But if you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, begin to run forward now, as I begin to count. One. Two. Three. Five. 
six. Okay, those of you already in front and those of you who are still on the way, cry to God now. Ask him to please save your soul tonight. Ask him to have mercy on you. Ask him to wash you clean with his blood. Promise him that from now on you will serve him and you will do his will for the rest of your life. And the rest of us, wherever we are, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them for a minute or two. Pray that the Almighty God will forgive them, we save their souls, we wash them clean in his blood, and we'll write their names in the book of life. Let's intercede for them. Intercede for them. Intercede for them, brethren. Intercede for them. Pray that the Almighty God will save their souls. Thank you, Father. Ask God to save your soul. Ask God to be merciful unto you. Ask him to wash you clean. Ask him to become your Lord and your Savior. Promise him that you will serve him for the rest of your life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so, my Father and my God, I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you for all those who have responded to the altar call. Wherever they are, O oh Lord, please receive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Kindly write their names in the book of life. And from now on, any time they call on you, please answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Uh, well, those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ, I rejoice with you. From now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I will need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. If you, if you are here, right here, you turn to your left. You will see a man there leaving a placard, or are the, are the counselors already here? Ah, okay, the counselors are coming. They will attend to you in a moment. They will collect the information I need, and then you can go back to your seat. God bless you. Now, the rest of us, are you ready to pray? Now begin to write down your prayer points. Number one, we are going to approach God the way we taught you yesterday. We are going to start by thanking Him. Thank Him that at least you are still here. That He kept you alive to see this glorious night. Thank Him. Thank Him for that. That's prayer number one. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me alive even till this moment. And then number two, you move on to praising him by telling him, oh, Father, I know you are the one who cleansed Naaman from leprosy. You cured the incurable. You opened the blind eyes of Bartimaeus. You did it. I know you did it. You made the lame to walk. You opened the womb of Sarah. I know some of the things you have done. I praise you for them all. And then number three, you move on to worshiping him. You tell him you are the God of all flesh. I know there's nothing too hard for you to do. 
You are the creator of all things, including me. You are the word from the beginning. The one that you should be sent to heal. I know you. You are the word. You are the unchangeable changer. You never change, but you can change anything and anyone. You worship him. That's number three. Then you go on to number four. I say, Father, when you speak, it is done. Please command the siege against my head. My brain, my eyes, my ears, my mouth, to be over now. Command the deceit against my head and all the paths be over now. Number five, you say, Father, please command the siege against my hands. It will be over now. Restore my hands to full capacity. Let everything I touch from now on prosper instantly and mightily. Number six. Father, please command every siege against my legs to be over tonight. Turn my morning to dancing. Accelerate my progress. Empower me to move. To run errands for you. Number seven, Father, please command every siege against wombs, physical and spiritual. To be over now
Number eight. Father, please command every siege against my mouth to be over tonight. Everything stopping my mouth from testifying about your greatness. Remove it tonight. Let me begin to sing, shout, testify, prophesy. and decree for you. Number nine. Ask God for mercy. For your nation. Whatever your nation may be, ask God that the siege against your nation be over now. Number 10. That will be your own individual request. For those of you who are gathered over in viewing centers across the globe, the altar is open. You can go to the altar and join together in faith with your neighbors and cry to God over these points. I'm going to pray with you first before I release you to go on taking your points one by one. But if you want to come to the altar, you can come. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory be to God. Keep thanking him, even as we are coming. That's, that's your prayer point number one. Thank him for all he had already done for you. Give him glory, give him honor for what he had already done. Thank you because I can feel your presence here already. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because I know you are going to do something very special in addition to what you have already done. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I gave you glory. I gave you honor. Give you adoration. I bless your holy name. May your name be glorified. May your name be glorified. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for what you've done in the past. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for allowing me to be a child of the living God. Thank you for the opportunity you have given me, Lord God Almighty, to come into your presence. Oh, glory be to your holy name. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for the air we breathe. Thank you for the water of life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we praise you. Because we know who you are. When you speak, it is done. When you breathe, life comes. You have killed incurable before. You have opened blind eyes. You have made the lame to walk. You have restored withered hands. You've done creative miracles. Oh, I praise you, Lord. I give you all glory. I give you all honor. You're ancient of this. The one who never grows old. The one who was before the heavens were created. Heaven is your throne, Daddy. The earth is your footstool. You control everything because you made everything. Thank you, Almighty God. Thou great son of David. The son of the giant killer. King of kings. Lord of lords. I bless your holiness. I worship you. I adore you. Because you reign supreme. You are higher than the highest. You are stronger than the strongest. You have spoken once, but twice have I heard the power belongs to you. Wisdom belongs to you. You are the light of the world. When you speak, darkness must vanish. Before the mountains were brought forth, you are God. When there be no more mountains, no more ocean, no more sea, you will still be God. You delivered Daniel from the den of lions. What can't you do? You pull down the wall of Jericho. What can't you do? Goliath bow down before you. There's nothing impossible for you. Oh, I worship you, my Father and my God. The Savior, the great physician, 
the great deliverer, the great provider, the source of all wisdom. There's no searching your understanding. You give power to the weak. To those who have no strength, you give strength. All good things come from you. Rendre moko sheke rendre mahoko koto rima kashanta. Kente rendre moko runde kesha kente moko runde ke makashanta. I worship you, Daddy. I when you command doors to lift up their heads. When you tell gates to hope, they just must obey you because you are the Lord, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord of hosts, the King of glory. Ramoshinke rende ke te tur monko rende ke manka shanta. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my God. Father. I'm in hundred percent agreement with this, your children. Lift the siege over their head. I'm hundred percent in agreement with this, your children. Lift the siege over their eyes. Lift the siege over their ears. Lift the siege over their brains. Lift the siege over their mouths. Leave the siege over their hands. Leave the siege over their legs. Leave the siege over their wombs. Whatever they touch from now on, let it prosper. Accelerate their promotion, O oh God. Oh, ancient of this. Whatever they touch from now on, let it prosper. Make them whole. Make them whole, body, soul, and spirit. Make them whole in everything that you touch, in everything where they need your touch. Touch them tonight. You made them for your pleasure. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Every seat hindering them from pleasing you. Let it be lifted tonight. Grant your request. Strengthen them as they pray. As they push, let something happen. Give them healing physical. Give them healing mental. Give them healing spiritual. Heal their marriage. Heal their businesses. Heal their churches. Heal their ministries. Heal their nations. Heal, Lord, heal tonight. That your name might be glorified forever. Heal tonight. Let your healing wind blow, Lord. Let your healing wind blow.
Wow, what a night we had tonight. Man, it was glorious. Glory and glory and glory and glory. Honor and adoration to the Lord God Almighty. Just as we wrap up this studio on the day two of the Holy Ghost Congress of the year 2021 of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, I have with me my wonderful sister, Sister Idi. <laughs> Hallelujah. How are you doing, ma? I am well. And thank God. Wow. How was it for you? It was wow, just the same yeah. word. <laughs> and all I can say is the siege against my body is over. Yes, 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 yes. Siege against body. And when a man's body